What is up, people of YouTube? I'm your host, Vernon, and this is Finally Fishing. All right, guys, we live in some pretty strange times at the moment. I think we're all waiting for everything to turn back to normal. Uh, however, I think it's going to take a couple of months, maybe years, before everything turns back to normal. Uh, I think we're going to have multiple of these little lockdowns, hopefully not. But I think as the virus spreads, uh, we're going to have these waves coming through. We might have multiple lockdowns. I think we're going to have to find a new normal, so to speak, to do my part in helping to lower the spread of this virus. Uh, I have decided that I will no longer be making fishing videos or going out making fishing videos uh, while we're in the lockdown. Um, this was not an easy decision to make. Uh, you guys need to understand that I've been waiting 10 months to go and do some bass fishing while the bass are on the beds waiting for spring. Uh, it was not an easy decision to make, but I think that the needs and wants of the community does outweigh my own. Uh, so I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, this does pose the problem where my channel is a bit of a new channel, a young channel. Uh, if I stop uploading videos, uh, the YouTube algorithm will take my channel and throw it into the deep dark black hole where YouTube channels go to die. Uh, I don't want this, so I'm still going to be uploading videos. Uh, still going to bring you guys fishing content. I'm quite excited about some of the footage and content that I'm going to bring you guys in the next few videos. It's a bit of strange uh, videos, but uh, I'm still excited to bring you guys this. Uh, and I think all these videos that I'm going to bring to you guys in the next couple of weeks, perhaps, uh, I'm not going to put them on the normal fishing side of my channel. I'm going to create a different section for them that I'm going to call the lockdown files. All right, so for this particular video that I'm doing today, I would like to focus on some knots. Uh, these are the knots that I use, and I would like to show you guys how to tie the knots, uh, and then afterwards kind of explain why these knots and why I would recommend these knots to you as well. So let's get started and look at some knots. All right, guys, so up first is our little clinch knot. Uh, the way this works, I have a little catfish hook here that I'm going to use. I'm going to take the piece of line we're going to tie on, put it through the eye of the hook. Okay, and this part here is our main line, and this little part we have above is our tag end. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a little loop with both of these lines and pinch it between your thumbs. Uh, the reason for that is we're going to need that little loop at some stage and then the tag end we're going to twist it around the main line six times. Okay that gives us a little twisted piece of line around the main line and then this little tag end of ours we're going to put that through the initial loop that we created through the initial loop there and then we're not going to pull on the tag line part we're going to pull on the main line part Let's give it a slight pull as soon as it starts curling together we need to lubricate our little knot for the sake of this video i'm using some water just to lubricate the knot uh, normally it's quite easier to use something like spit um, or wetting your hands or anything like that but you need to lubricate your little knot uh, quickly going to finish this and then i'll explain why uh, while we have a little knot like that, you're not pulling on the tag end, you're only pulling on the main line, pulling it closer to each other. 
and you end up with a little knot like that. Very important to give a nice finished look this little tag end that we have sticking out here we are just going to trim that down a bit to make a better looking presentation all right so the neater presentation is not only for us humans it's also for the fish especially when you're fishing clear water the fish can actually see these extra pieces of line the less there is for them to see the more likely they are to ignore it and go for your hook all right and that is quite simply basically a little clinch knot all right so i need to stress to you guys how important it is for the lubrication on these knots uh, you basically having moving parts that are rubbing together uh, where they are rubbing together you have friction friction causes heat and the heat causes either your knot or the line to weaken this is why the lubrication is important it helps with the sliding of these moving parts uh, meaning you have less friction less heat and that makes for a stronger knot all right so our second knot is very similar to the first one this is the improved clinch knot works the same way where we go through the eye of the hook have a little tag end and our main line and yet again make the little loop that you grab with your thumb and again six times we go around the main line take our little tag end and we put it through the initial hoop that we created that we are pressing between our thumbs push it through that little loop we've created and where the improved clinch knot is different uh, this little loop that it's forming as we push it through our first loop we're going to take that tag end and pull it through this new loop that it's creating and yet again we need to lubricate our knot with this we need to grab a hold of our little tag end and we just pull on the main line and as we pull on the main line this little knot part is going to move towards the little eye and there we have it nice tight little knot against the eye and again all we're going to do is trim off this little tag end for a nice and neat presentation in the water all right so that is the clinch nut and the improved clinch nut uh, why these specific two knots uh, well the clinch nut is actually one of the most commonly used knots uh, i think if you go to every single continent you will find someone using this knot uh, you do get lots of graphs uh, like this one where people tend to give percentages of how good these knots are i don't necessarily believe these things i think it's more uh, someone's personal preference to the knots and stuff like that on all these charts this little clinch knot normally scores quite high i believe it is one of the strongest knots out there um, but there's more to it than just being a strong knot it is quite easy one to tie uh, it's not as complicated as some of the knots out there uh, I think if you're only going to learn one knot, this is the knot that you kind of need to learn. Um, however, there are lots of different knots for lots of different reasons. And I would still encourage you to have a look at all the other knots and learn the uses for them. Uh, for instance, something like a loop knot uh, that gives you a bit more action and better presentation on your lures. If you use a little loop knot, uh, if you want to tie some line together for instance there are lots of different knots to use for that uh, one that i use would be the blood knot uh, that is in essence basically two clinch knots that you put together um, that is why i say learning the clinch knot is a pretty good knot to, to use it's a very versatile knot i use it when i'm tying on flies 
uh, also use it when going bass fishing, tying on lures, uh, normal fishing, for, like for instance for catfish fishing, tying on hooks and little weights and stuff like that, it works for that as well. And it does also work when going ocean fishing, uh, but I'll explain a bit more when we get to the line part. Uh, there's a few different tweaks to these knots uh, in the different settings you have to use. Okay, so how do you decide whether to use the clinch knot or the improved clinch knot? Well, the more you look into this, uh, you will actually start to find videos where people say that the improved clinch knot is actually named wrong. It's actually supposed to be the deproved knot or something like that. Uh, they say it weakens the knot rather a lot. Uh, and then you get videos where people say, but they've been using this for 70 years, never failed them once. So you have lots of different opinions on it. Um, I, however, don't think everything is black and white. There's a big gray part. I think this falls perfectly into that gray part uh, where I think the type of line you're using, um, how well the knot is tied, stuff like that. I think there are many factors uh, going into how well a knot holds up. Uh, but I do think that the line you're using does have an impact on the knot you're tying. Uh, to give you guys an example, when I use nylon, uh, that's something you normally use when going fishing in the ocean. Uh, nylon is a lot thicker, uh, not that easy to work with. Uh, when tying a clinch knot with nylon, uh, you don't go around six times, you only do four. Uh, but with nylon, I specifically use a clinch knot. Uh, likewise with braid, I also use the clinch knot, uh, but with braid, braid is again a lot thinner. You can actually do a couple extra turns rather than six. You go for somewhere between six and eight of these little turns around the main line. Um, both of these I use the clinch knot. Uh, I find that if you use the improved clinch knot on these specific lines, uh, they tend to cut through the line or the knot and you get a picture like this where it's a clean cut off of your line uh, if you use a clinch knot on these type of lines and likewise on something like fluorocarbon I again use the improved clinch knot. Uh, I find with the fluorocarbon I don't know whether it's because it's harder or more stretchy or something like that but over time the little tag end pulls back through your knot uh, you get something like this uh, where it makes a little bend in your line uh, that is normally a sign that uh, if you use the normal clinch knot and the knot comes loose you get a look like that uh, that is why with something like fluorocarbon I use the improved clinch knot I find that it works better to keep your knot secure and not move through as it does with the normal clinch knot now on normal monofilament line, you kind of have to listen to the line itself. You tie the knots, test them, see how the line reacts. Uh, some of these lines, I find that the clench knot works, some of them the improved clench knot works. You kind of have to tie the lines and listen to what the lines are telling you. The, the different type of line determines which knot you are basically going to be using, as well as each different brand of line. There are also differences in which brand of line you use. You kind of have to test these knots and figure out which ones to tie on which line. All right, guys, these are the knots that I use. Uh, they are tried and tested. I've really had no problems with these knots if they are tied correctly. So these are knots that I would recommend to anyone out there to use. Uh, if you want to learn to use these knots, please have a look at how I did it. And then very importantly is to practice it. Uh, that's kind of how the human brain works and learns. You have to practice, practice, practice. The more you do, the more your mind gets used to how it's done. And pretty soon it's something that goes to autopilot mode and you can kind of do it without thinking about it. But you kind of need to practice it. So feel free to do that. But all right, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. Uh, if you found this video to be informative, please do give us a little thumbs up. Uh, if this is the first video of mine you're seeing, consider hitting the little subscribe button. Feel free to go check out some of the other videos on my channel. Some are more exciting than just 
a little explanation video. Feel free to leave any questions or comments down below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.